Hi and welcome to the Dead Ball area. This year's World Cup has delivered some monumental games and one of the picks so far has been England vs Wales in Pool A. England's decision to go for the win against Wales has been a major talking point so we're going to look at that and we'll start with the decision to kick for the corner. And there are a lot of ways to look at this. A kick for the draw makes perfect sense and in hindsight a draw is the better result. But personally I had no problem with the option to kick for the corner. England have been under pressure and since the previous kickoff, they are attacking well, making ground and finding space. But importantly a try puts England a score ahead, a converted try puts them a try ahead. So ultimately, while it didn't come off, I'm of the opinion that the kick to the corner was a fairly positive move to try and close the game out completely, take the pull by the scruff of the neck and put all the pressure on Wales and Australia. Additionally, there is still 4 minutes to play and a kick takes a minute of that up. So whatever the outcome, Wales will put England back under pressure from the kick be it a miss or a score, and if England miss, Wales will kick long and they have to play out of their half. So no issues with the decision. Yes, it's a bold call, but I'm okay with that. It's the line out that follows which is where things start to break down a little for me. A line out 5 metres is a good attacking opportunity, but it's also pretty obvious what England are going to do, catch, set and maul. And they do so and are promptly smashed into touch. Now that's fine, these things happen, but the issue here for me is that they could have been avoided, if only England hadn't failed to react and adjust to the Welsh defensive setup. Let's look at the England setup, and we can see here England actually have four jumping options Robshaw, Parling, Wood with Parling turning and Launchbury coming forward to lift, and Launchbury with Wood turning and coming back to lift. But if we look at the Welsh defenders, we can see they're completely focused on two points Parling and Robshaw. The main wall defenders, Wynne Jones, Fallatown, Charteris, are all middle to front of the defensive line out. So if England go to the back, Launchbury would be jumping against Tapuric, whilst Wood would be, in theory, jumping against Wynne Jones, and Parling would jump against Samson Lee. Both Launchbury and Parling are good line-out options, especially as it's clear that Wales are not going to challenge for the ball and instead attack the jumper and the maul on landing. If England throw to the tail, Wood turns and comes back to lift Launchbury. He brings movement into the line-out and they have brought the ball in nearly 15 metres, giving themselves the option of the shift drive and have all that space to work in. Plus, it gives this group of forwards here momentum as they come in off the line, whereas Wales have to come back and around if they intend to split or spin them all. Alternatively, if they throw to piling, they then have the option of coming in field or working the shift drive, again with 15 metres to work in. By throwing to Rob Shaw, they bring the momentum of all these players towards the touch line. Additionally, all these England players have to come back and around to drive forward, so everything loads itself towards the touch line. England throw to Rob Shaw and Charteris wraps him up on landing. We can see Fallatow binding onto Charters before Robshaw even lands, and as he lands, the first thing they do is drive straight into him, splitting him away from Brooks, his lifter, and protection. And Brooks' back is turned, and the idea is for him to get in between Robshaw and Charters on landing. But as Charters has wrapped Robshaw up whilst he's still in the air, he's unable to do so, and he's left isolated and unable to contribute to the defending of his skipper. And if we spin it round to the other side, we can see Owens does exactly the same thing to Runipolo, but before Robshaw has landed. Now that's illegal. With Robshaw in the air, it's not a maul, and in theory, it should be a penalty on the 15 metre line. But that's fine. The issue is England notice is coming, so why Vunapolo and Brooks are so passive in their play is a little surprising. The touch judges let it go, and Charteris, Owens and Fallatow are able to drive straight through Robshaw on landing, who separated from his support is sent flying back. Wynne Jones, Jenkins and later Tapuric hit in the right side of the ruck. There's only one place for it to go, and it spins out and towards the touch line. Now, as we mentioned earlier, we can see that Wood, Haskell and Launchbury have to come back and around, and before they're even on the mall, it's going backwards and towards the line. It's a really poor call from England, and it compounds everything by even worse execution. A front ball is a good option, and it's easy to catch, and you get the ball in play safely, but it's easy to defend, and you have to be sure it's the strongest option. For me here, it's not, with both Piling and Launchbury offering more dynamic attacking options, if slightly more difficult throws. Line-out ball is clean, prime attacking ball, and if England can't be more intelligent against Australia, they will struggle to get over the game line and ultimately get their attack going. Additionally, Australia have developed a good attacking and defensive maul, so it's going to be interesting to see who adapts to the other better. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to follow us on Facebook, Twitter and YouTube.